Freedom of speech seems to be increasingly under siege. It's been happening on college campuses. It's happening on online platforms. It's happening within companies, and it's happening in public spaces. From Gamergate to Ben Affleck's gross and racist tirade to trigger warnings and safe spaces on college campuses, to Hillary's deplorables comment to punching Nazis, and now to the mayhem after Milo Yiannopoulos tried to speak at UC Berkeley, the battle over free speech is now front and center in the American psyche. Now, it's a curious trend when people are increasingly treating words as violence, and then they do everything in their power to block out views that they disagree with. Now, there are very serious consequences to this, because at best, suppression of speech might push those ideas underground for now. But at worst, it just adds fuel to the fire, because those ideas don't just simply disappear. So when colleges protest their controversial speakers, it just gives them more publicity and popularity. And when companies fire those employees that think differently, they can just find an audience elsewhere and meanwhile air that dirty laundry to the public. Potentially illegal practices that they've been doing to try to increase diversity. And when online platforms ban their content creators, they just go to another platform and bring their audience along with them. They're not gonna be able to get rid of me. It's going to be a constant wild chase for them to shut down ideas that threaten theirs, and I'm not going to let them catch their breath. Now, speech is important because that's how people learn how to think. Free speech has to be as untrammeled as possible so that people can be wrong and they can be biased and they can still express their opinions, including their darker ones, and then allow themselves to be subject partly to improvement by the world, because if you say things that are too stupid and then act them out, the world smacks you a good one. People learn to think by being able to have, hold, and explore a thought without believing it. Unfortunately, many people have a thought and then immediately believe it by looking only for supporting evidence and avoiding any evidence against it. Now here's the problem. When we don't let people speak, then they don't learn to think. And if they can't think, then they get weaker over time. And the weaker they get, the more bitter they become. And then we have a whole group of lonely, resentful victims. And since they can't think for themselves, they tend to resort to groupthink. So they seek out echo chambers where they form extremist views. This city is run by Jewish communists and There's criminal niggers. And they become easy prey to ideologues. Build that wall! Build that wall! The biggest advantage of extremism is that it makes you feel good because it provides you with enemies. Let me explain. The great thing about having enemies is that you can pretend that all the badness in the whole world is in your enemies and all the goodness in the whole world is in you. Attractive, isn't it? So, if you have a lot of anger and resentment in you anyway, and you therefore enjoy abusing then you can pretend that you're only doing it because these enemies of yours are such very bad persons. And that if it wasn't for them, you'd actually be good-natured and courteous and rational all the time. Today, we're seeing these very dynamics play out on both extremes of the political spectrum. On one end, we have what some are calling the dark forces of extreme nationalism. And here's how that unfolds. Step one. People feeling victimized need speech in order to sort out their thoughts, however aberrant. Step two, others, however, don't allow them to speak. When have you been oppressed? When? when? So it prevents them from sorting out their thoughts, and they're unable to discard their most erroneous aberrant ones. What, what do you love about white privilege? Oh, it, it looks great. Like, you know, I mean, the people are good looking and, you know, nice suits, great literature. Like, yeah, I just want to bathe in white privilege, the greatest, <laughs> most awesome thing. Step three, these repressed people then latch onto identity politics echo chambers, where they join fringe movements and form a sort of mass hysteria. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! <laughs> So when we repress our unconscious shadows, it just resurfaces later in these deviant group ideologies. So what was once a local problem can then snowball into a much larger social one. Now on the other extreme of the spectrum, we also have another sort of mass hysteria bubble, where seemingly intelligent people are freaking out about everything. 
And here's how that one works. Step one, media echo chambers reinforce these cognitive biases that prevent people from understanding reality. There's not gonna be a President Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. <laughs> You might be leading the Republican ticket next. <laughs> I know you don't believe that, but I want to go on. To Sorry to laugh. Next. I just want to say, you're not going to be president, all right? Here we are. And which Republican candidate <clears throat> has the best chance of winning the general election? Of the declared ones right now, Donald Trump. <laughs> At real Donald Trump, at least I will go down as a president. Step two, reality hits, and then the ensuing cognitive dissonance triggers everyone, especially people with higher neuroticism. Step three, in order to resolve that cognitive dissonance, people latch on hysterically to fake explanations promoted by their echo chambers. And that just perpetuates the cycle of mass hysteria. And then we end up with a situation like today, where competing identity politics and other hysterias are battling and fueling each other, and that can lead to a very serious situation. Because when angry, delusional people can't fight with words, they fight with violence. And when we block others from talking, we're also blocking ourselves from understanding how they might think and how they'll act. F Donald Trump! The left is responsible for this result because the left have now decided that any other opinion, any other way of looking at the world is unacceptable. We don't debate anymore because the left won the cultural war. So if, if you're on the right, you're a freak, you're evil, you're racist, you're stupid, you are a basket of deplorables. How do you think people are gonna vote if you talk to them like that? In order to effectively navigate this current age of mass hysteria, you need to have social intelligence. Because if you can't read your social environments, then you won't be able to persuade anyone. And if you can't listen to other arguments, then you've already lost the ability to think. So here's what can be done. Starting with colleges. At their best, colleges are a space for the exposure to ideas. Because that's how students learn to become effective thinkers and communicators. So they must protect free speech. The reason that you come to university to be educated is because there is nothing more powerful than someone who is articulate and who can think and speak. Power, and I mean power of the best sort. It's authority and influence and respectability and competence. And so you come to university to craft your highest skill and your highest skill is to be found in articulated speech. <laughs> If you're a master at formulating your arguments, you win everything. And better than that, when you win everything, everyone around you wins too. Because to transform yourself, it means you shine a light on the whole world. Well, there's nothing more exciting to do than that. They're just, everyone's just praying that you would come here and manifest everything that you could manifest. And that's what you should be doing instead of waving placards and complaining about how you're oppressed for God's sake. You should sit down. You transform yourself into something that's articulated and sensible and grounded in history and knowledgeable and wise, man. You can do anything you want and hopefully anything you want for good. Because if you have any sense, everything you want to do would be for the good because there's nothing more compelling or meaningful or, or useful in combating the tragedy of life than to, than to struggle with all your soul on behalf of the good. And the universities have forgotten that. Go away. Now for companies. Well, when companies fire people that challenge the herd, it sends the message that when you speak up, you might be punished for it. And you can't hold the claim that people should feel free to express dissent and then fire someone for doing exactly that. Because your employees will notice such glaring hypocrisy, especially coming from a leader, and they start to lose trust. And talented people despise working for stifling bureaucracies, and there's gonna be plenty of competitors ready to snatch them away. Nowadays, tech companies are breaking from the tradition of remaining agnostic, and they're getting into the business of regulating content. They might start out wanting to censor hate speech, but it's a slippery slope before hate speech turns into speech I disagree with, 
And then we might end up persecuting those that we don't truly understand. Yes, we empower yes. those terrible ideas by making them I mean, electronically taboo. Yeah. And then the point is they're going to fester. Um, whereas if we, dis if we discuss them, we can diffuse the ones that are terrible, we can spot the opportunities that we don't know we have, and we can, uh, we can move forward rather than descend into civil war. So as these platforms begin determining right speech, their employees' political biases might seep into the algorithms and the content policies. And then they're designing these unconscious minds that might censor ideas before people even get a chance to interact with them. And as users catch on that a supposedly unbiased tech platform is actually promoting a political ideology, that's going to alienate a lot of people. So hopefully, management has enough social intelligence to accurately read the market, lest they get caught by surprise just like with the last election. Now, consumers should note that even well-intentioned companies that want to build algorithms to combat fake news might just replace those with other fake news more aligned to their own agendas and biases. And all of this under the guise of protecting the public. So you have good reason to be vigilant of this big brother authoritarian creep. Now, if you're a professional troll, you can actually profit off of this climate of mass hysteria. Here's an opportunity for you to use people's cognitive dissonance and aggression to your advantage. All you have to do is trigger the other side Invite them to silence your speech, make sure the media is involved, and then play the victim card and watch your popularity soar. They simply will not allow any speaker on campus, even somebody as silly and harmless and gay as me. <laughs> UC Berkeley, of course, being the home of the free speech movement, um, it's both ironic and sad that this campus um, appears to be nowhere, no friend to free speech. In current times, it takes absolutely no courage to denounce Nazis or slavery. But if you're someone that wants to speak an unpopular truth, you have to consider the social consequences of your words. Be prepared for character assassinations, and don't be naive to think that you can actually convince the mob. If you want to sway reasonable minds not yet in the grips of mass hysteria, then you should avoid using hyperbole or malice. And if you have that rare ability to think independently and speak articulately, you'll be able to find an audience anywhere. And finally, for all the reasonable minds out there, ultimately the only way forward to avoid falling into mass hysteria yourself is to get rid of your useless cognitive biases and emotional triggers. Because only then will you be able to think effectively, speak effectively, and persuade others with the truth. And avoid getting suckered by ideologues or fake news hysteria.